how to write a parallel program with the most basic pthread API. We're going to introduce it in this video. First, what is a pthread? You probably know what a thread is, but where does the p come from? The p stands for POSIX, a standard API set used by different operating systems. POSIX includes many APIs such as system call APIs, network communication APIs, and mathematics APIs. Here we only discuss the APIs related to multi-thread computing. The most basic mental model for a thread is to consider it as a function running on another CPU core, in parallel with the main thread. Of course, the thread function can call another function, and all the function calls from the thread function will run on that CPU core. So, to create a thread, the first thing we need to do is to write a function. As you can see from the example on the right, we print hello world for 10 times. The function that can be used as the entry point of a thread has some requirement. It must accept one argument of type void star and return one argument of type void star. They are designed to pass in data to the thread and retrieve data from the thread. We will introduce how to pass data and retrieve data from the thread later. So, next, we can create two threads that run the same print message function with the pthread API. In the main function, we first create two pthread variables. We name them thread1 and thread2. We store them as variables so that later on we can identify the threads. Next, we use pthread create API to create and start threads. The pthread create API takes four arguments. Now, we only discuss the first one and the third one. We will discuss the other two arguments later. The first argument is the pointer to the thread variable. The pthread create API modifies the variable, and that is why we need to pass in a pointer. The third argument is the function we want to start as a thread. Compiling the program needs special arguments. We want GCC to be able to link to the pthread library implementation. Therefore, we pass in the argument dash LP thread. It is required. If you run this program right now, you probably expect the line hello world will get printed 20 times. However, your program will probably only print the result a few times or even not printing anything at all. The reason is that the main program will hit the line return zero almost immediately. Before the threads can print all the lines, the main program access. Once the main program terminates, all the threads will be killed. So we need to let the main thread wait for the other threads. To wait for the threads to finish execution, we can use pthread join API. The pthread join API takes two arguments. The first one is the thread we're waiting for, and the second one is the data that accepts the return value of the pthread. Here, we do not accept any values from the thread, hence we pass now to the pthread join function. In this example, we call pthread join twice to wait for both threads to complete execution. We first wait for thread 1, then thread 2. But it does not mean thread 2 has to finish after thread 1. As programmers, we do not really have control over how fast each thread runs. Instructions in these two threads run in completely random order. Now we have thin the whole program that creates two threads and executes in parallel, and wait for the threads to complete. I want to go through the example again, but from another perspective. This analysis can help you understand the flow of the program. First, when we are executing this line, the main thread starts. Currently, we only have one thread in the process. When we create the pthreads, two threads are created and these threads will run independently. As the main thread waits for the threads to complete execution, these two threads will run the same function in parallel. After printing all the lines, these two threads will arrive at the return line. Note that in the CPU, they do not have to be synchronized. It is very likely these two threads arrive at the return line at a different time. Finally, after the threads complete execution, the main thread can pass the pthread join calls and finish its own execution. I hope this brief walkthrough can help you understand the process better. While this flow is on CPUs, we will see the process is very similar to GPU program execution. Understanding this example will help you understand GPU programs better. 
Also, this example is not very interesting as the threads cannot differentiate them and they only perform fixed tasks. In the next video, we're going to walk through how to pass in data to the thread and how to retrieve the results back.